Her breathtaking beauty pales in comparison with her strong sense of self. At 21, Yit Yashina made history in the Holy Land. She is the first woman of African descent to win the Miss Israel pageant. In a world where race has often created barriers to success, Yit Yish has come out on top. To be first, you have all the attention focus on you. And I have to represent my whole ethnic group. Because through me, they see the models. Through me, they see and discover our whole ethnic group. Born in Ethiopia, her journey to Israel began with searing personal pain. I never cry. Just hearing your story, it makes me, it, it's upsetting. I am Today I'm digging deeply into myself. A family tragedy sent her and her brother into the arms of their grandparents, Ethiopian Jews who had settled in Israel many moons before the tragedy. While still a child, Aina was suddenly faced with a new language and a new life in a new land she has embraced. She served in the Israeli army, she mastered Hebrew, and now she will represent all Israelis in the Miss Universe pageant. Coming up, Miss Israel, Yit Yish Aina, tells her story on African Voices. Yit Yishaina was born in Chawahit, a small village in Ethiopia near the city of Gondar. As a young girl from the village, Yit Yish could never have imagined she would end up with a crown on her head. But that is exactly what happened. In 2013, Aina, who also goes by the nickname Titi, became a beauty queen when she won the Miss Israel pageant. When she was crowned Miss Israel, she became the first woman of African descent to hold that title. Aina emigrated to Israel with her brother before even reaching her teen years, after watching her mother suffer through a painful illness. What happened to your mom and how did you deal um, with what happened to her at such a young age? My brother, mother and I lived together and everything was fine. One day she was suddenly sick and everything happened quickly. She was sick and we had an aunt in Addis Ababa was more sophisticated and told us to bring her there where she could get better treatment in the hospital. We left for Addis Ababa and there she went into treatment. I was a little girl and never really understood what was happening. They never confided in us because we were too small. So the whole time I went to play outside and return home to my aunt's house where we lived. I would see my mother on the bed sometimes crying. So I would run away from the house to play and not be at home or I would go to study at the Jewish embassy. I tried to keep busy and not even think that she was sick. But every day I came home, I would see my mother on the bed doubled up in pain. I thought if I didn't think of it too much, it would pass. It did not pass. Her mother, Adelou Sheshin, died. Her father had died years earlier. Yitish and her brother Yelik were suddenly orphans. Heartbroken, they arrived at the Tel Aviv airport. Their grandparents had called and made clear they wanted to raise their grandchildren in the Holy Land. Well aware of her Jewish roots, Yit Yish had dreamed of going to Israel, but she did not expect to be going at the lowest moment of her life. What was that journey like as a 12-year-old girl who was obviously deeply hurt by what happened to, to your mom? The journey was, I think, what saved me. Because I was deeply hurt and I wanted to escape from Ethiopia and forget everything that had happened and get on with it. And I never felt good there. The whole time we spoke about the Holy Land and the land of the Jews and how much we wanted to live there and the place we belonged. And the journey was something that I had waited for. I wanted to break away from everything and go on. And she did. She threw herself into her new life, learning a new language, a new culture, a whole new world. Not even a decade after emigrating to Israel, Yit Yishina found herself standing on a stage. It wasn't Yit Yish's idea to compete in the Miss Israel pageant. 
So when the winner was announced, she was stunned. As the first African-born Miss Israel, her name and image suddenly were being splashed across newspapers and online. The publicity caught the attention of one of her heroes, the first African-American president of the United States of America. On his first visit to Israel as president, Barack Obama invited Aina to the state dinner. While there, Yitish got to meet two presidents, Israel's Perez and his guest from America. We were all waiting for the president. I was looking left and right and again. I saw all these important people and there I was. It is something that took me back. I never dreamed that something like this could happen to me. Meeting both presidents is something I never believed would happen to me. Suddenly I thought about the little girl who had suffered and the little girl whose only dream was to run and play the whole day. The pain I went through, I saw it all. The pained little girl, who is now a strong young woman, Yit Yishaina, is living a dream. She is an aspiring fashion model and fast becoming a role model, something she's keenly aware of. That's why she so openly shares her journey from Ethiopian orphan to Israeli beauty queen. You're 21 years old and you've already had an amazing life, but you've been through a lot of difficulties. Can you tell me what your very first memory is of Ethiopia when you were a child? The moment I sat on the floor and my mother on a chair braided my hair. I did not hold my hair strong enough and she would say, hang on tighter. That moment is captured in my memory. That is what I am remembering now. Because of what I went through in Ethiopia, I preferred to wipe out a lot of things, and only in the last year did I try to come to terms with these things in my past. This photo is one of the last remaining pictures of Yitish and her mother in Ethiopia. Can you describe what it was like there? In the beginning, my mother lived in a village. There, everything was big and spacey. When we moved, now that I think of it, the strange was a small house made out of mud. My brother and I shared a room in a large open space with a bed for my brother and I, a bed for my mother. There was nothing special. Everything was sparse and simple. It wasn't a multi-story villa, but I was happy. We would be outside running in the forest, playing in the mud, gathering wood. There were dams we would jump in and out of. Those were the things that made me happy. My bed then was the best place. The happy times before her mother's death, before she knew what it felt like to be an orphan, before the plane ride to a new life.